Good morning, Stephanie from Always in Stitches. I'm going to do a class online with the Janome 500E embroidery machine. We're going to go step by step on what this machine will do and how to get to it. And so we're going to start right from the beginning. And in the beginning, I want to show you how to thread the machine. I've got a couple spools of thread here. I'm going to start with red. We're going to do the bobbin first, and then we will then we will thread the machine. So, of course, I'm going to turn it on. I've already got it plugged in. My experience with embroidery is if you have a spool stand, it works much better. So I have a spool stand in here today. Uh, we sell these for $16.99. It's just a, I use it for all my sewing, but it works really well for embroidery. So I'm going to put that on, take it through the, oops. I think mine, that part is, is loose. Take it through that. Now for doing the uh, bobbin, we want to go through this tension disc right here. So you want to kind of floss that a little bit through there. Bring it over with both hands to your bobbin. Wind it around a couple of times. Oops. Wind it around a couple of times. Move it over to engage it and just hit the start button. That's going to wind your bobbin. So we're only going to load a partial bobbin. I just wanted to show you how to load the bobbin. So I'm going to stop it now. I have a bobbin that I'm going to use today for our demo. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to cut the thread. And I'm just going to set it aside for that. Now, to load the uh, to thread the machine, you'll want to go underneath this lever right here. There's a little curve, and then you'll go around like this. And that's how you typically thread the machine. If you're having a difficult time with skip stitches, then you'll want to do that and go through this eye of this neat of this plate right here, and that will prevent skip stitches. So normally this is all you'll have to do if for some reason you have an issue, maybe your thread's a little older or something's causing it to skip a little bit, re-thread it and go through that uh, eye there. So numbered off, one, two, three, four, is up here, go sit back down, five, then you want to go underneath this lever and you want to turn this to the left and uh, cut your thread at the thread cutter that's on the side. Now, to thread the bob, to make sure that it's in a position for it to thread, you want to lock the machine and turn the needle until Okay, to, to uh, use a needle threader, you want to lock your machine, and you want to lower your foot until you get this little needle um, icon up here on the top. Then, then your needle threader is in the right position, your needle's in the right position, and, you, and it will thread your machine. I had a boo-boo, so maybe I need to do this over. makes a little loop and what you want to do is just grab a hold of that loop and now your machine is threaded. So those are the important steps. Lock your machine, turn the hand wheel, and uh, lower the foot, turn the hand wheel until you see this icon up here that says okay and then your needle threader will work. So it's like most every um, Genome machine. Now unlock it and now we get this screen. And this screen is showing you designs, alphabet, and edit. So that's where you go to your designs uh, and your alphabet and your edit. We're going to start at the home button. Oh, we are at the home button. Okay, here's the built-in design. The designs are displayed by size and category. 
with the smaller sizes showing up first. So you just turn the page, pick a category, and it will tell you how many design pages there are in that category. And if you look here, this is telling you what hoop to use in those designs. This is SQ14B. SQ stands for square. There, some designs are in an RE, and RE is rectangle. So you'll want to look at that to see what hoop to use for these designs. So you can get it by category, or you can also get it by hoop. So the, the, the built-in designs work in these two hoops. Once you have picked a design, the other hoops that are available with this machine, which I'll show you in a minute, will pop up and you can do uh, bigger designs or do some more editing and that sort of thing. So that's what this is. That's the home button. So the home takes us to this screen. Then there's a file where you can save designs. If you've, if you've come up with something that you use repeatedly, repeatedly all the time, you can save it. The next button down or the icon is the settings. So in this one, you have common settings, you have embroidery settings, and you have language. Common settings, you can set the contrast that's on your screen. You can brighten it, or you can make it a little dimmer. This is the noise. As you're, as you're switching from one thing to another, the machine will make a little noise. So this will, will uh, tell you how loud that noise is going to be. This is if you want to go from millimeters to inches. I particularly leave it in inches because it's easier for me to read the designs because I, I can't transpose the numbers into millimeters quickly. This is the touch screen calibration. Um, that's the next icon. And what that does, if you go to put a design, you want to uh, pick a design and that design doesn't pull up on the screen, your screen might be out of calibration. And all you have to do to fix that is just say yes and touch the pluses. And it will go back to calibrated. The next category down is format. And you'll want to format your memory or format a USB. And what that does is it creates files within the USB for you to save your embroidery designs. Uh, Genomi uses the JEF format, and, you'll, and when you uh, uh, format your USB, it's going to create an EMB and an EMBF folder for you to put your designs in. The next icon down is the timer, and that's how long it will be run before it kind of shuts itself down. It doesn't turn off, it just gets quiet, gets the lights go down, and so that's what that one is set at. This is your upper tension sensor if you want that on or you can take it off if you don't like that. This is your sewing lights. You can turn your lights off if they're bothering you. And this one is kind of, this is the quiet mode. If the quiet mode is on, you get this little icon over here and what that does is it doesn't allow your machine to run at full speed. So if you've got a baby or somebody taking a nap and you're doing embroidery and it's close by, and you don't want it to run at 860 stitches per minute, this will eliminate that. You will only be able to go up, I think it's at 400 stitches per minute. So if you want it to go a little slower and a little bit quieter than that, you would turn that on. The next screen is um, a message that will tell you when your bobbin needs to be cleaned. So you'd want to have that on. The next one down is the, your screen color, blue, pink, or yellow, whatever, whatever looks best for you and whatever you like. And then if you've changed anything and you can't remember where you were, you'll want to go back to default and hit yes, and that will set everything back to the factory default settings. So that's in common settings. Now we're going to go to embroidery settings. And this is your automatic tension. You can adjust it, but it's set at automatic. This is your remaining bobbin thread. So when you finish a design and you cut the thread, <clears throat> this is how much thread will, that will be, um, this, is, this is how much thread that is left on your bobbin. So if you're getting close to running out, 
this will stop and will, the machine will not operate once your bobbin gets down to this point. This is how fast it's going to run per minute. SPM is stitches per minute and it will go up to 860. In the quiet mode it won't go that fast. This is if you want it to stop after one stitch. So if you want to bring your bobbin thread up so it's a little neater on the back, you'll turn that on. If you want to do your have your colors go in consecutive order, turn that on. This is to calibrate your hoop. So if you're if you put your hoop on the machine and the needle doesn't go right through the center of the template that, that you use to line things up with, you'll want to calibrate it. And then this is if it says, um, if you want to calibrate it, you just say yes and it will go through the process of, of moving uh, your machine around to where you get it where you need it to be. Okay, this is thread cutting. You can have it off if you don't want the machine to cut the thread. You can have it on, and these are the these are what's going to uh, it's going to affect. Or you can personalize it by using that button, and you can change those up to whatever you want. If you want a little bit longer than an eighth of an inch, if you want it, if you don't want it to cut at the end of a color change, if you if you want the cutting command on or off, that's what these things do, and that's customizing your um, your th your thread cutting. This page gives you the the color uh, numbers of each one of these different vendors of embroidery thread. And so if you pick Janome and then you do a built-in design, it's going to have a number by that color that tells you what color to use to make it look exactly like the design that you're stitching out. Um, my issue with this, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes the vendors like Madeira and Guterman, their numbers change. So what the number on the screen might be a little bit different than what the thread looks like. So I pretty much go by eyesight. What color I see is what color I like, and that's the one that I, uh, that's the color that I use. I don't necessarily go by the num color number that these companies represent. And this is your grid line. This is your grid size. And this is resume. And resume will be if you turn your machine off, walk away, and turn it back on. If resume is on, it will go right back to where you stopped. So that's kind of a handy feature to have on. Then the last button is the language. And uh, Janome's are um, universal. So there's several different comp company or different countries, I mean, that you can turn on and get the language that pops up on the screen to be in that language. Comes in handy if you are one of those people that have an exchange student or something like that. That's what that is. So we're all done with settings. The next button down is a question. And if you forget how to wind a bobbin, you just click on that and it's going to show you how to put the bobbin on there to move it over, go through this tension disc here. So there's four pages of that. Wrap it around, cut it with the, there's a blade inside the inside this piece right here. There's a blade in between all these slits and that way you can cut your thread there. Um, you know, it's telling you to turn, the, turn it on. That's this on off button and then wind the bobbin. Um, another question would be, uh, replacing the needle, threading the machine, inserting the bobbin. Those are pretty common questions that people have, so that's where you would go to get the answer to that. And then, of course, this is the lock button. Anytime you stop or ch to change a needle or change the bobbin or uh, do anything on the machine that you're going to walk away from, you'll want to lock it. You can accidentally bump the start button and you don't want it to run when you're not ready for it to run. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of locking it when you're done. And again, look at this. When you go to thread your bob, thread your needle, it has to be in the lock position. And that little icon there has to show up. If that does not show up, that means your needle is not in the right position for the automatic threader to work. So you'll need to turn the hand wheel and get the needle in the right position. I have a question. Okay. 
Are there certain weight threads that will not work with the auto beetle threader? Yes, you don't want to use anything heavier than a 40 weight. Most embroidery thread is 40 weight. If you go to a 30 weight, it's a heavier thread. You won't, you're, you won't want to use your um, needle threader. That's true on all machines, but it's a good point, Peter, because um, people forget. And your bobbin, your needle threader is a sensitive little piece on your machine. So if you forget some of these steps, you might bend the little wire that goes in the eye of the needle, um, and then your needle threader will stop working. Um, from 40 up to 100, the needle threader will work. You just don't want to go any bigger than 40. Did that answer it? Yes. Good. Okay, so we're exiting out of that. So that's the icons on the main screen. And then when we go to get a design, let's just pull up a design. And I want to pull up one with colors. I'm going to go to border designs because that's got a lot of color in it. These, ha these have a lot of color in them. So let's go to number three. Okay, raise the foot. There we go. And now the machine is moving into position to stitch this out. And if you notice right here, it's telling me I want to use the square 14B 5.5 by 5.5. That's the, that is the hoop I want to use. That information is up here as well. It says ready to sew. If this was loaded and, a mach and I had a, a hoop on here, we, I could hit the button and be ready to sew. So, but what I want to do is show you what, what, um, what the, what this what the features of this design are. So this is the hoop. This is the size because we have it in inches. It's telling me that it's going to be 2.5 by 4.9 inches, nine colors. It's set at 600 stitches per minute. It's going to take 20 minutes to stitch it out, and the tension is set at auto. So the tension should be set. We shouldn't have to do anything for the tension. So that's that's what's up here. And then when you go to the sidebar here, these icons, this first one is, this one is going to show you the whole design. The next one is going to show you what color is stitching. And as you progress through the colors, this is going to be a different design uh, that's going to be stitching out. So you can look at the whole thing, or once, you, once um, that color is stitched out, it's going to show you a different part that, so you'll know where it's going. So that's what that button does. This one gives you if, you, if you click on these icons, it's going to show you exactly the area that it's going to stitch in. I suggest that you do that every time that you load a design because you want to make sure that you have your hoop and your fabric and everything set in the right spot before you start stitching. So that's what that does. Then we go to these icons up here. This one does a basting stitch around that area and this one does a double basting stitch so once you've got it and you've checked it out and it's where you want it if you want to baste that um, fat your fabric down to your stabilizer then that's what you that's where you would do that the next one down is your color grouping if you need to move your design to a different spot that's what these buttons will do. It will move your, move your hoop to where you want it to go. This one is if your, if your design, once you've got your uh, project hooped and you've got your design picked out and you're ready to stitch and you notice that it's off just a little bit, you think you didn't quite get it straight, well, you can do a little bit of tweaking here. There we go. See how it's moving just a little bit up and down? So if you got that design on there and it wasn't quite where you thought it should be, 
See how it's moving? So you don't have to unhoop something. If you got your lettering crooked, you could just adjust it with this and then it will stitch out str straight or stitch out the way that you wanted it to. So that's what that button does. In the next page, this is gonna show you all of the different colors. These are the different colors on this particular design. And these are the numbers I was talking about. When you select your um, color, when you're in your setting mode, I had, it, I had it on Janome, and for Janome polyester thread, this blue is number 207. Well, if that if Janome's number changes for that blue, then this isn't going to match up to the color that you that you think it is. So I just kind of go by what I see and what I like. So mostly I don't I don't pay a whole lot of attention to those numbers. Um, but that's a guide. It's a guide if you want to look exactly like what it what the machine is set up to, and you have the right thread, then that should be able to help you get the right color that you want. And then on this screen also, this uh, this needle shows you how many stitches in each color. So it gives you kind of an idea that you know, let's just little, this little pink one here is 281 versus this darker pink one here at the bottom is 2400. So that gives you an idea of how much thread or how much time each one of these are going to take to stitch out because this, this one's got more uh, thread use than the others. And then this is if you need to... Um, Play around with your tension. Uh, you can, it's Again, it's set it automatic. I've never had to play with my tension, but this is where you could do it. And then this is where you can also change um, your how, how long the cut thread is so when you're finished with the design. And see, and see how that is curved? It's moved because I had moved it in the previous, um, when I was at the other, uh, button. So let's move that back. There, there we go. I hit the clear button and now it's back straight again. So it's straight on our screen. So that's all the uh, editing that you can do from this screen. So now let's go back to the home button and go to this um, grid and now you can do some more editing. Now we can move this design around with this or we can move it around with the buttons. Okay, first, the first option you have is the hoop. And at this point now, all of the hoops that come with this machine are, are uh, available to me. This design fits in this 5x5, five five, but say I want to add something to that, I want to make it a little bit, uh, you know, alter it a little bit, I'm going to pick this hoop now. Now I've got more editing, that I, more room that I can do things to. I can um, add some letters. I can, this, this is a bookmark, so I could put a name up here so that it stitches out for the on the bookmark for my granddaughter, say. So that's what this does. It takes you to more hoops. This is one, if, it, if you notice the way it looks, it's a copy. So if you click on that, you're going to get an exact copy of that design. This one is just exactly like it looks. It's trash, so it's going to move that design back off. This one, if you see, notice it's going from smaller to bigger. This is where you can adjust the size. You can go up 20% or down 20%, down to 80. I'm gonna move it back up to 100. The, when you do that, this machine is not smart enough to add or deduct stitches. So when you do that, be, be aware that it's gonna, you can make it bigger, but it's not gonna add any stitches, okay? The next one that we can click is rotate. We can rotate that around. You can do it by one degree at a time or you can do 45 degrees at a time. Get that back straight again. Okay. 
This is mirror image, and this probably is not the best design for mirror image, but let's see what it does. So it changed it from vertical. Now this one will change it horizontal. Not the best design to show you, but that's what that does. So if you have a design and you want to have the same design on the other side, that's where you would do it. The next icon is not lit. And it's not lit because we don't have any alphabet in here to play with. So if we had an alphabet here, which we'll do in a minute, this would be lit up and we would be able to uh, play, with the, play with some lettering. This one, again, is if you want to group a design. So if I had a second uh, design that I put in, in with this, I could group it together. We'll do that, I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna move that down. I'm gonna go back to my home page. I'm gonna go to the alphabet. And I'm just gonna type in A, B, C. Oops, let's trash some of those. A, B, C, D, E. And I'm gonna say okay. Now my alphabet is on this screen, along with my design. So let's go back to the alphabet. Now I've got the alphabet. If you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a green box around that. And if I click on this design, the green box is around this design. So whatever is highlighted is what you're actually moving and touching. So now that I have the alphabet on there, I'm gonna hit this alphabet key. And what that does, it allows me to spread those out or make them closer. That is really cool. Or curve them. So if you had, if this was a, a bookmark and you were making it for someone special, you could put their name on it and, and include it in the bookmark. So you can curve it either direction. So in order for the alphabet to, to be highlighted here, you have to have the alphabet there. Are you limited to the number of different groupings of alphabets you can put into a design? As long as there's room on your screen. That's why I moved to a bigger screen than this calls for. So I can move that down and go back to alphabet and do F, G, H, I, J, whoops, F, G, H, I, J, and say okay. Now I have the second set of the alphabet wow, under there. that's pretty cool. So that's neat. Yeah, and see how the H and the I are kind of close together? Mm -hmm. So what you can do is just spread those apart a little bit. See, one little touch, and now you can tell the difference between the two. So that gives you that option. So, you know, I have a son whose name um, has an I in it, and it, I always have to spread it out a little bit so that it doesn't, so you can definitely tell that there's an I there. Okay. So then the next screen, this button right here with the hearts, is if you want to group this all together. Right now, all three of those are separate designs. So if I hit this, and I hit this, now they are one. Say okay. Now these will... What did I do? Now, okay, these will all move together. So now I've made it one design. If I turn that off, go to this and these are separate these are separate designs well this one's so close it clicked into that one but so this is where you can group them together so once you've got it if you've got something in particular and you're not saying ABC and you're putting somebody's name or something cutesy there with it and you want it to move it all at the same time then that's when you would go to this the next icon option that you have is to save this is a, where you can open up a file and save that design on the machine. Now, this is not a computer. It's got a very small computer in it for embroidery design. So I don't recommend saving a lot on your machine because it will just take up, just make everything run slower. But that's an option if you do something all the time, say a quilt label or something, uh, you can save it in a file. The next- Are you, are you able to put a USB and save it to the USB drive? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now on this one, this one is where you can change the color. Let's go back. 
Let's go back and highlight this and, and go to this color wheel. Okay, so this part of that design is blue. If I want it to be red, I can do that and say okay, and now that color is red on this. If I want the next color, let's want this one to be red, say okay. Now the red is on both ends. So, and that's, that's just a visual. The color that you st stitch is the color that you pick. But if you wanna see what that design would look like with red in those places instead of the one that it came with or the one that the design that it was written for, you can do that. You can do this kind of in a preview. Uh, let's change that purple to blue. And also, you can change the tone of the blue. So right now it's a blue. We can make that a lighter blue and we can make it a darker blue just by using this. And again, this doesn't change anything other than the visual of what that design is gonna look like. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna play around with it and see what it will look like before you actually stitch it with colors other than what it's built in design calls for, you can do that there. So if you have like a limited number of threads and you wanna stitch a design, you could put it into that motif to see how it would look with like a limited thread palette? Yes. Oh, yes. that's neat. Yeah, you don't have to do exactly what it says. You can do it, um, you can do whatever you, whatever you, that's a great thing about embroidery. You're not limited to what this looks like. You're not limited to what any of design that you purchase, uh, the, the colors that it's in, the color that the design is shown in, you can make it any color that you want. This particular mode, I forget what it is, so we're gonna go back to that here in a minute. Looks like it kinda does a monotone, so I'm not, I don't remember. And I just read the book last night, so I would feel better about it, but I don't, I honestly don't remember, so we'll go back to that. We'll, I'll find it and we'll go back to it. Okay, so now we've played around, we've added the alphabet, we've added, we've got the design. And um, letters are always gonna show up in black. You can make them any color you want, but, but the letters are always gonna show up in black. And I think up here, it's added another color. Before it said nine colors. Uh, I think the minutes have changed a little bit, but that's because we've added to it. So at this point, we're ready to sew. And if I had, a, I had something hooped and on the frame, all I would have to do is hit the button and um, we would be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to hoop stabilizer. So we're gonna move over here to the screen. And we picked, we now, since I've added things and I've changed um, the hoop, I, I went to a bigger hoop so that I could add more things. Now we are at the RE20B 5.7 by 7.9. We want to make sure that that's the hoop that we pick now because initially before I picked a bigger hoop and added lettering, it was a different hoop. So pay attention to your screen and make sure that you are following what it says because you don't want the, it to hit the sides of the hoop. So the RE, RE20B is this hoop right here. RE20B. This is the template that you use to line things up with. When you've got something, a t-shirt or something, and you want to line it up in a certain way, hoop it, put your, put your template in, and line it up, and make sure that you've got it where you want it. And because this is a little bit heavier design, I'm going to lose, use a little bit heavier stabilizer. We sell OASD. It is my favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. It is my favorite um, stabilizer. And it comes in all different um, types. Fusible woven, fusible fleece, poly mesh, cutaway, ultra clean, tear away, um, tear away fusible, sticky, aqua mesh wash away, wash away, and this one is <coughs> wash away. <coughs> this is a design that is not, um, it's not, it's a woven, I'm gonna do it on a fat quarter. So it's a woven fabric, so you don't need um, a cutaway. If you wear it, 
you should use cutaway. So if it's wearable, use cutaway. If it's not, then you can use tearaway. So I'm grabbing this tearaway right here. I've already used it, so it's got a little bit of it loose. And here's the hoop. You should make sure that you cut enough to where it's going to fit in the hoop. The hoop has an inner hoop and an outer hoop. Loosen it with this screw here. So when that's there, you want to make sure that you've got enough to go all the way over on both sides. Now I'm going to get my scissors here and then cut it. And I don't have the right, I don't have the best scissors for this, but I'm going to use these. There's ways to save on stabilizers. Um, that's kind of a learn as you go. And, you'll, and the same thing with which stabilizer to use, it's a learn as you go. If we stitch this out and it ends up not being the way we want it, then I know that I stitched it in, my stabilizer wasn't quite strong enough. So I'm gonna put my fabric, whoops, put my stabilizer and my fabric. in the hoop. I've loosened, I've loosened this, the bolt here enough to where I can, where this is gonna expand and it will fit in there. You just wanna push it down in there, all four corners. Once you get used to doing it, it's not that hard. It takes a little practice when you first get started getting it in there. Still loose enough that I can move this around a little bit. Now I'm going to tighten it up here. We have some little magnetic uh, screwdrivers that works really good if you have problems with your hand tightening it up. Uh, it, it's a really small little one and it fits right in there and it works great. I didn't bring those back here for demo, but I would suggest getting a pair. Now, the machine, this machine, some of the Janomis are a little bit different, but this machine fits on the side right here, like this. Move that in, and you've got it locked in. So it just clamps on and clamps off. Some of the machines go to the back. This machine goes right there. Now, we're ready to go. But do you remember what I said in the beginning? I like to do a... Um, trace around where it's going to stitch. So I'm going to hit this button and it's going to go to this corner. It's going to go up to this corner. And then it's going to go back to the middle. Now I'm going to do a tack down. So this one is where I get one tack down, and this is where I get a double tack down. It tells me I need to lower the foot. This comes in really handy if you're not um, if you're not hooping the the item that you're embroidering. Some things you don't want to hoop, like a velvet or a towel or something that's a little more difficult to hoop. So this comes in handy as it will keep that design and keep your fabric from moving. Okay. X out of that. It tells me to raise the foot. And now we're ready to sew. And this red button right here, or this button right here is going to tell me what's stitching first. 
If I hit this, it's going to show me where it's going to stitch. So let's do that. Now it's telling me to lower the foot. stop and it's going to go to the next corner. Now I didn't change the settings on this so, it cuts so it's not cutting the thread. To show you a great pair of scissors for that so we'll leave it as it is for now so if you look at this little plus sign is showing you exactly where it's stitching we're still on stitch one this is the number of stitches that the design is in total this is how many stitches it's done so far it's interesting to watch and, and see how it goes from one spot to the other. Whoever designed this design in the digitizing set it up to go from one spot to the other. And uh, I, I find it fun to see where it's going to go next because it can't always predict. Like it did this one, this one, this one, and then came back here and then went over here. I kind of always think it kind of balances itself. Okay, raise the foot. Now if you notice, it's gone down to color number two. And I might have played with that and made that red um, accidentally. But anyway, so now we're on color number two. And as, we, as it progresses through, that's going to change. But if you don't want to see that, if you want to see your full design, you can always go back to this little daisy here, and it's going to show you the whole design, or this is going to show you what it stitches next. And again, this is how many stitches it's done so far. We're on color two, and if we were using Janome polyester, it would be color number 235. This should be, well, it, this tells me the same thing, 744 stitches. Now, should I want to go back because I don't like how something looked, or I walked away and, and something happened, when I hit that button, I can go back to whatever number I want or forward. Like this is already stitched 744 stitches. So I'm going to cut the thread. Whoops, can't do it with the foot up. I'm going to cut the thread. Okay, now if I say I want to go back and just redo something, say I want to go back to 750, I type that in and say okay. Raise the foot, say OK, and it's going to take me back to stitch number 750. So you can always go up or, up or forward or backwards, depending on where you're at and what you need to do. If you want to go to stitch, let's go, I'm going to go through these color numbers here, and I'm going to say I want to stitch number four, that part of the design, because it's the same color. Then I can just move to color number four, and there's the, that's the number of stitches that it stitched up to that point, and now I can stitch out color number four. I don't have to necessarily go in the order that it has here. If there's underlay stitches, you'll want to do that, but if there's not, you can, you can do that. You can control that if you want to. We're not going to stitch out a whole design. I just want to show you I'm going to show you how to load the um, stabilizer and the hoop and what you can do once you've got it going. This is similar to, to what we stitched out in, in the first part of the design.
These are kind of the limited editing that you can do yourself. If you want to do, um, say you want to skip part of the design. I did something for a customer once that they wanted, they just wanted the nail polish bottles to stitch. They didn't want the stuff in between. So I just watched the machine as it was stitching and when it was finished with part of the nail polish bottle, I advanced it to the next step of the nail polish bottle. That was crazy, but anyway, you can do that by just stopping the machine and going to the, to the next spot that you want to. It takes a little bit of uh, patience and practice, but you're not limited to doing just in, in following A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five on this machine. You can skip around and do what, uh, what you want to do with it. Change the colors, skip around, lots of things you can do on the embroidery machine. Skip just part, just, just part of what you want. I did um, an apron for a girl that works here, and um, it was a sheep, because she likes to knit, and it was three or four white sheep. Well, I thought it would be funny to do a black sheep. So when it came to stitching that particular part of that design, I changed the thread to black, and it didn't completely stitch out the whole sheep. It went over and did something else. So I had to pay attention, watch my machine, and when it switched to another part, I changed the color. And then when it switched back to stitching the rest of the sheep, I put the black back in. It took a little patience, but I did it because it's what I wanted to do. And you just have to pay attention to your machine, see where it's at, and move it uh, and change the colors as you as you please. So you can kind of customize things that are already built in or already pre-designed in, in that way if you'd like. So Peter, what do you think? We got anything else we need to cover? I did have a question. When was it that you got your first embroidery machine? I have been here almost 10 years and I bought my embroidery machine before I started working here. So I would say 11 or 12 years ago. What was it that made you decide to buy an embroidery machine? Partly, the, I have a sister that bought one, and when she has one, I have, I have to have one. So uh, we kind of do things together, so that was part of it, but I just like it. I, I have kids, I have grandchildren, I have four boys and 11 grandchildren, I like to do things for them. And it's just fun to do. You can make all kinds of things. Um, I've made purses, I've made diaper bags, I've made bib ta burp towels, I've made hoodies. Uh, there are so many designs out there that are available that you can, you're, you're just limited to what you can imagine. And I have not gotten into the digitizing of a design, creating where it's gonna stitch and how it's gonna stitch, what kind of stitch it's gonna do, if it's gonna be a weave stitch or a satin stitch. I'm not into that part of it. I pretty much buy the designs that I like and stitch, stitch them out the way that they were uh, digitized to do. Um, so I, I haven't gone over, crossed over there, but I just like doing it. It's fun. Awesome. I think we covered the machine pretty well as far as what editing that you can do and how to get where you need to go. And just one more thing before we leave um, the video. These are the things that come with this particular machine. It comes with the four hoops, embroidery scissors, um, um, brush, two screwdrivers, needles, spool caps, a second spool cap, the thread or the um, um, scissors that I was talking about that I love that I feel like you need when you're doing things is this one here. It's called the grasshopper or side hopper. Little bitty. And when you're doing very many letters, it comes in really handy because um, you can get right into those letters, right in between them. Come over here and watch. Take this off. I'm gonna remove this hoop. Get it where Peter can get a better shot. So you can get right in here. And cut these threads right at the at the beginning. Sometimes when you're doing lettering, the jump stitches are not, uh, they're really, really close. So these little, these little side hoppers work great for that. 
See how how close I can get. It's relatively fast. Mm -hmm. I think that's what really makes a piece polished is when the jump stitches are trimmed. Yes. Because it's something that sometimes is overlooked. Mm -hmm. But you notice it as an embroiderer right away if they trim the jump stitches. Yep. You can do that with other scissors, but I found that these are really good to get underneath those and get it really, really close. Well, in between those ladders, when they're so close together, yes, it's you can't really get anything in between the ladders. That's a pretty good sample of these little scissors. They are called side hoppers. So this is something that we love. This is another. This is another um, pretty much needed tool for um, embroidery. And I'll show you because I have a pair open. <clears throat> and if you were doing an applique, these scissors get right down by it. So you could, an applique, you'll stitch it down and then you trim off the extra fabric. So these scissors are made to get right in there. So they are great for applique. I use these all of the time. So that's the, these scissors. And like I said, we sell the OESD stabilizer. Here's some of the um, uh, already pre-designed designs that we sell. We do some of the OESD. We do a lot of Kimberbell. This is mug rugs. This is a really fun thing to make. These are geared towards the young'uns. A lot of fun. That's one of the things that I like to do is make these for the for everyone that has a baby. They're just cute. Don't make me call my auntie. Uh, one of them says bed hair. Don't care. Uh, they're just adorable. A um, lot of fun. Quick stitch out, and um, it's just it's just fun to do. I think that's it. I hopefully you learned a little bit about this machine. And certainly if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call the store. We're here for you. Uh, if, <clears throat> if we don't get back to you the same day, it could be that we're just a little busy, but leave a message, leave a detail of what you need, and we'll be happy to help you any way we can.